So what we're going to look at today is the last part of the census notes, which deals with your ear. And you grew up with your sense of touch, taste, sight, sound, and smell. Well, your ear is actually also responsible for another sense, which is your sense of balance. And so in the case of your ear, we're going to be looking at three parts. This portion here is what we call the outer ear. This portion here is what we call the middle ear. And this portion back here is what we call the inner ear. And since your ear is responsible for your sense of sound and your sense of balance, we're going to do the sense of sound first because it's kind of a chain reaction. Your sense of sound is based entirely on vibrations. So this will vibrate, which consists of vibrate, which consists of vibrate. And then we'll talk about your sense of balance after that. So in the case of your ear, okay, again, your ear is responsible for both your sense of sound and your sense of balance. So with your ear, most of your ear is your sense of sound, and your sense of balance is one chamber inside of your ear. Okay? So our sense of sound is going to be based entirely on vibrations, thus a chain reaction. And this will cause this to vibrate, and so on, and so on, and so on. So forgive me for being a little shaky here, but here we go. And again, your ear is divided into three sections, your outer ear, your middle ear, and your inner ear. Okay? Your pinna is what you think of as your ear. It's the hyaline cartilage, and its job is to collect sound. And so remember, it's folded, and those folds are there for surface area. And then your tympanium is what you know of as your eardrum. And your middle ear will be from your tympanium to what we call your windows. Okay. Your middle ear is where you find your ossicles. Remember, ossicles are the three ear bones. And if this room were the middle ear, the door would be your eardrum, and then you have two windows in the back. Well, each window would lead to a different chamber because your inner ear has two chambers in it. One of those chambers will be for your sense of sound and the other chamber will be for your sense of balance. So we're gonna do your sense of sound first. Okay. So in the case of your outer ear, okay, like we said, the pina is what we call your ear flap. Sorry for it bouncing. Okay. The pina is your ear flap. It's what you would call your ear. It's that hyaline cartilage and it's there for sound amplification. Okay. Your ear pina is folded, and that's to shoot sound down into your auditory meatus. Remember, your auditory meatus is your ear canal. And it's also called your external auditory canal. And imagine if you didn't have what you call your ear. Sound would hit your skull and then turn around and bounce right back out. The only way you would hear something is if just by chance the sound hit it just right, so it just happened to go straight down your ear hole. But your pina's job is to collect the sound waves. And it's folded so the sound waves, when they hit your ear, bounce downward or upward and bounce into your auditory meatus. That's why animals who have movable ears, they'll cup their ears. Or when you really need to hear something, you put your hand behind your ear, but your ear is cupped. That cupping of the hand or the cupping of the ear helps project the sound waves down into your auditory meatus. So like I said, if you didn't have what you call your ear, the sound waves would hit your skull and then turn around and bounce right back off. And you wouldn't hear anything. The only thing you would hear is if it just happened to hit your skull right, so it went down your auditory canal. And if you guys, um, with your auditory canal, it, gets, it starts off wide and gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. That is in order to speed up sound waves. You might have seen those things like in stores or museums where it's like this big tub and you put money in it and it starts to roll. It just kind of rolls through the tub and then it starts going down the tunnel, and it's, it goes down the funnel. It gets faster and faster, 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 faster. Well, that is how your auditory canal works. It starts off wide, and then it gets more narrow, and that's going to make the sound waves bounce even faster because we've got to reach threshold. We've got to get something vibrating. And so if the sound waves aren't moving fast enough, you're not going to be able to get your eardrum vibrating. Okay. This is also where we have serumous glands. We talked about this when we did your skin. Serumous glands, if you remember, make your earwax, and that's to trap things from going down into your ear chambers. And then you have your tympanium, which is what you call your eardrum. It is simple squamous tissue. You can see through it. That's why when doctors, when doctors look in your ears, they're looking behind your eardrum. They're looking to see if there's any fluid in your inner ear, or excuse me, your middle ear. Because if there's fluid or buildup in your middle ear, things aren't vibrating like they're supposed to. If they don't vibrate like they're supposed to, you're not going to hear like you're supposed to. So your tympanium is the real name for your eardrum. That's where tempo comes from. Okay. And it's simple squamous tissue. So just like I mentioned before, 
If you know anything about drums, the drum is, has a skin on it and there's keys around the rim and you have to tighten the keys, just like you have to tune a guitar or you might have to tune other instruments. You have to tune your drums as well. And so if you pull the keys too tight, when you hit the drum the skin, it can tear. But if you don't do them enough, they're gonna sag. And if you hit it, it's not gonna vibrate like it's supposed to. So your body has to rely on pressure. We talked about this with the tubal tonsils in order to make sure that your eardrum is tight like it's supposed to. So vibrations will hit the pina, they will bounce down the auditory canal, and they'll hit the tympanium. And the tympanium then has to vibrate. And behind the tympanium okay, is your middle ear, which is also called your tympanic cavity. Okay. And this is where you find your ear bones. And we talked about the ear bones when we did the skull. These were, remember, as a group called your ossicles. You have the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And the malleus is called the hammer. The incus is called the anvil. And then the stapes is called the stirrup. And you can see why the incus, the stapes, has its name. Okay. Right. But again, this is the home for your ear bones. It's called the ossicles. Right. The eardrum will vibrate, causing the malleus, the hammer, right here. So you can see that hammers hit things. And when you do, um, like if you're forging metal, you lay the hot piece of metal on the anvil and you use the hammer to flatten it out. So you got the malleus, which is the hammer, and the hammer starts to vibrate. And when the hammer starts to vibrate, it's gonna hit the anvil or the incus, and the incus will start vibrating. And when the incus vibrates, it's gonna hit the stapes, which is also called the stirrup to vibrate. Now remember also in this area, you have your eustachian tube. And while I'm thinking about it, you do need to um, know the parts of the ear. So you'll need to go on Google or Yahoo and find a diagram of the ear and know its parts. You can also go to my website, look under images and diagrams, and there is a picture of the eye and the ear there. You'll need both of them. Okay. But here you've got the incus, the malleus, and the stapes. Remember, this is where you find your eustachian tube, which goes up from your throat. So your eardrum would be right here. So you have pressure, you have air pressure coming in from this side, and you have air pressure coming in from the inside. And that's what gives your tympanium, that's what gives the skin the tautness it's supposed to have. And so when the doctor is looking into your ear, they're looking to see if there's any fluid buildup back here. So if you have an ear infection, you have fluid and sometimes pus buildup. So these bones are not going to vibrate like they're supposed to. That's why when you're sick, it sounds like you're hearing things underwater. It could be because your tubal tonsils are swollen. So you're not getting enough air up into this cavity, and so your, tear, your eardrum is sagging, so it's not going to vibrate like it's supposed to. Or you could have an infection and fluid is building up in the ear, and so the bones aren't going to vibrate. So kids who have tubes put in their ears, if this is the eardrum right here, okay, the doctor will go in and put a small incision at the bottom and stick this little itsy-bitsy tube. It's like less than two millimeters in that hole, and that tube allows air back into this cavity. It helps dry it out. It also helps release any mucus or liquid um, and help clear out that area as well. So the pina takes the sound, focuses it to the auditory meatus, the external canal. The sound vibrates down the canal, hits the tympanium. The tympanium vibrates, which gets the malleus vibrating, which gets the incus vibrating, which gets the stapes vibrating. Now, at the end of this chamber, you have two openings. Okay. So like I said, if this room were the middle ear, the front door would be the tympanium, the eardrum. The two windows back in the back would be these two windows I'm talking about here. Now, each window would lead to a different chamber. One chamber is going to be responsible for your sense of sound, and another chamber is going to be responsible for your sense of balance. Okay. But they both make up what we call your inner ear. Okay. So the middle ear ends deep within the temporal bone, okay. and the wall has two openings in it, each covered with a membrane. Okay. Opening one is called the oval window, because it's oval shaped, and it will lead to the chamber in the inner ear that's used to continue this passage of sound. Okay. Opening two is called the round window, it's also called the cochlear window, it leads to the chambers of the inner ear that are responsible for your sense of balance. Okay. So we're gonna continue with the sense of sound. So when the 
ink, when the malleus starts to vibrate, it gets the incus vibrating. When the incus starts to vibrate, it gets the stapes vibrating. And the stapes will cause the oval window to start to vibrate. Okay. And there's going to be a chamber behind the oval window. So we have this picture here. All this part in tan is the outer ear. Here's your pina. Here's your auditory meatus, and there's your eardrum. This area here in pink represents the middle ear, and you can see the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And then back here is the inner ear, but you can see there's two parts to it. And you can see how the stapes goes up against this round snail-like thing. It's called the cochlea. That's going to be the chamber responsible for your sense of sound. And up here, you have this thing that looks like a roller coaster ride. Those are called your semicircular canals. Those are going to be responsible for your sense of balance. Okay. But since we're continuing the sense of sound, okay, the oval window will start to vibrate. And you have this curled up snail-like chamber back here. It's called the cochlea or the bony labyrinth. Okay. And it will start to vibrate. And it has a fluid inside of it. And that fluid is called the perilymph. So if the bony labyrinth starts to vibrate, then the perilymph will vibrate. Now I want you to think of this as a curled up um, garden hose, but imagine it, there's a garden hose inside of the garden hose. One garden hose is really thick and one garden hose is really thin, but you've got two garden hoses inside of each other. Right here, you've got your snail. Okay. Think of that as a coiled up garden hose, but it has another tube inside of it. So that's called the bony labyrinth. So when the stapes hits it, the bony labyrinth will start to vibrate. Well, it has a fluid inside of it, and that fluid is called the perilymph. So the perilymph will start to vibrate. Okay. That will get the tube inside of the tube called the membranous labyrinth. Okay. This is made from bone. This is made from membranes. So it's a tube inside of a tube. Okay. And so you can see why sound has to be loud, because you have to get bones moving. Then you have to get membranes moving. Then you've got to get liquids moving. So this is going to cause a membrane tube inside of it called the membranous labyrinth to vibrate. Well, the membranous labyrinth also has a fluid in it. It's called the endolymph. But if you could cut into the membranous labyrinth, it is fuzzy. It has hairs on the inside. And these hairs are called the organs of corti. And remember, every hair in your body is connected to a nerve. So when the bony labyrinth vibrates, then the perilymph vibrates. When the perilymph vibrates, the membranous labyrinth vibrates, which gets the endolymph, the fluid on the inside, vibrating. So these little hairs, these little organs of corti, will start to vibrate. Well, each of these is connected to a nerve, so when they vibrate enough, they reach threshold, and you create electricity. So sound will go to your brain. Now, over time, you know older people lose their hearing. One of the reasons they could lose their hearing is that these tiny hairs break off. You guys know that you constantly make, my hand's shaking, sorry. You know that you constantly make hair, the hair grows. Well, as you get older, your body's going to stop repairing and growing those organs of corti. So one of the reasons that older people have a harder time hearing is these hairs stop growing. Or people who listen to really, really loud music, you can get these guys vibrating so much that they break off, just like the wind can break off branches of a tree. Well, Hard vibrations can cause these little hairs to break off. And if they break off enough, your body's not going to waste time making them anymore. So they're like, well, you keep breaking them. You don't need them. I'm not going to make them anymore. So this is one of the reasons that people who listen to really loud music um, can lose their hearing over time. It could be these little hairs here. So that's your sense of sound. And again, apologize for shaking around. Okay. Now, your sense of balance is due to these things called your semicircular canals. They're the ones that look like roller coasters. Okay. And so they're also found in the inner ear, and they're also filled with fluid. Okay. But inside of these guys, you have little itsy-bitsy particles of calcium. It looks like little grains of sand called autoliths. Okay. And they're also lined with cilia. So all these guys are fuzzy, and you have fluid that circulates inside of them, but they have little pieces of calcium in them. So as a baby, you are lying down. The calcium settled back here in the back. So the cilia folded down back there in the back. And so your brain got used to that position. So when babies first start rolling over, they get dizzy. 
because as you move, this fluid moves. So these little autoliths will move. So the hairs will move. So your body has to get used to, okay, when the autoliths settle down here, that means I'm sitting up, I'm standing up. If the autoliths settle back here, I'm lying down. If the autoliths settle up here, I'm standing on my head. Your body has to learn when the autoliths settle and the hairs pull down what that means. So that's why when you first started to walk, you got a little bit dizzy. Okay. Um, you don't remember it, but because your body's like, whoa, these hairs aren't supposed to be folded down, what's happening? Okay. So gravity will cause the autoliths to settle based on your body position, and the hairs fold downward, sending the information through the nerve to the brain. So when you like spin around, you guys know that you can spin and spin and spin, and when you stop, the room still feels like it's spinning. Well, the reason is, the fluid in here is still spinning. And so those little particles are bouncing all over the place and they're folding all these hairs. So your body makes you feel dizzy in order to get you to stop. Because so your body has to figure out, okay, what's going on? Why, am I, why are these little particles bouncing all over the place? And when you stop spinning, the fluid is still spinning. So that's what gives you that dizzy sensation or the idea that the room is still. Now you guys know if you get on a boat, you can get seasick. Well, that's more of an eye-brain coordination. You see the horizon going up and down, okay? and you feel the boat going up and down, but physically, you know your feet aren't moving. That's why if you get really dizzy, you're supposed to look at your feet, because your feet are stable. Your feet aren't moving. When you look at your feet, your feet aren't moving. They're in the same place. But if you look up, the scenery is flying by you. That has nothing to do with the fluids here, because the fluids aren't moving. Your feet aren't moving. It's more of a visual, and your brain gets messed up saying, whoa, why? if my feet aren't moving, why is everything else moving? And it can throw you off. Okay. And so this is going to help tell your brain its body position. And again, when you spin, these otoliths and the fluid spins. Okay. So that is it for your sense of sound and your sense of balance.